Shalom, Apostle Ha, coming back at you with this truth, giving all praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, And um, the topic that I'm going to go into is entitled Strange Laws of the Bible. Now, there's a controversy with uh, the book of Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, concerning uh, marriage, marriages and uh, if you lay with a woman that's married or which is adultery or engaged to be married and both of them or the woman doesn't cry the law is that they both should be put to death now if the woman cries or screams she's to be spared and uh, the man that committed the act, which which is rape, is put to death. As you read down, and this is the controversial part of uh, Deuteronomy, the twenty-second chapter, is if a, if a man sees a a woman in the field, preferably a young woman. And he lay, lay hold on her and has sex with her and they be found the man is to pay 50 shekels of silver and how many shekels are 50 shekels what's a shekel you can answer that in the comment board if you have the answer but he's to pay the uh father of the woman that he lay with 50 shekels and they and and he has to deal with that woman for the rest of his life for the rest of her life so you had to consider if you're going to lay with a woman and force her you know are you willing to spend the rest of your life you can't put her away So that's, that controversy has been thrown back and forth since really, or even before 2013. It, um, it was, uh, I'm not Sarnetta, uh, well, it was down there along with uh, Brother Polite, and he confronted us with that question and we gave him the straight up answer according to the scriptures. And from that moment on, even today, there's still a controversy over that uh, particular scripture. Now, if you guys claim to be scholars and you're deep researchers and the Spirit's working with you, you would see it just like, but when you go to any of the um, the uh, translations of the scriptures most of them pretty much use the word rape R-A-P-E anyway um, I don't, I'm not going to read that scripture because you know we all know it we, all, we know it too well anyway this, the first precept I'm going to go to is Deuteronomy 25 verse 11 now this is involving a woman getting her hand chopped off because she grabbed and it didn't say hurt the guy but grabbed the guy that was fighting her husband and he was getting the best of this woman's husband so she got into the fight and she grabbed his secrets and the punishment the punishment was to get her hand chopped off now let me read it Deuteronomy 25 verse 11 when men strive together one with another they're fighting and the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband 
out of the hand of him that smiteth him. Meaning this one man is getting the best of the other man. And this man might want to just kill, kill this man. So she being the wife jumps into the fight and grabs, grabs him by the nutsack. It doesn't say whether he's hurt or, or his uh, stone is broken. It, it merely says, let me read it. It says, when men strive together, one with another, and the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smiteth him and putteth forth her hand and taketh him by the secrets. Now the secrets, if you look it up, it just means the family jewels. You're not, well, your, 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 uh, your, your, your penis, your, your nutsack. All she has to do to, is grab it. Not even hurt the man. Then it says, 12 verse, then thou shalt cut off her hand, thine eyes shall not pity her. Next precept. Deuteronomy 23. And a lot of y'all Israelites out there good for saying, Ken, keep all the laws. Keep them laws. Or a lot of Israelites don't even know the laws. They might know a few basic laws. The Sabbath day, which they get that wrong because it's not on Friday sundown or Saturday sundown wear your fringes and the reason why you wear your fringes is to remind you to keep the laws which if you don't know the laws how you gonna keep the laws and I see we got to get more into the laws which is a boring subject you know it's a boring subject if you just started reading the various laws you know I guarantee you just like going into the Hebrew we used to teach them, we used to bring, put up videos on the Hebrew. Not too many people will watch those videos. So the same thing would happen with the law. If you start really teaching the law, just reading um, a Leviticus, certain chapters in Leviticus, certain chapters in, the law is found in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's where the law is that was given to Moses, that's where they're found in. Deuteronomy 23, verse 1. He that is wounded in the stones or have his uh, privacy member cut off. Now, this is something that Esau used to do to Jake in slavery because Esau had penis envy. You know, they would, they would strip down Jake and see what Jake had in between his legs and they would get mad at it and they would cut it off and sometimes they would put it in a jaw and that's and that's that's a heinous crime man that just further proves that this man is the damn devil now we're not going to do that to these Edomites in the kingdom it says he Deuteronomy 23, verse 1, He that is wounded in the stones or has his privy, privy member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of Yahweh. Now, I don't know the full backstory. If somebody knows the story, they can put it in. That I believe that Esau is doing it so when Jake dies, they don't get to go to heaven. You know, that's how, that's how Esau thinks. Now, the congregation is talking about among Israel in the physical realm not in the spiritual realm because when you go to the spiritual realm you receive a new body it says in the second chat a uh, second verse Deuteronomy 23 verse 2 a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord even to the tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Now, when you look up the word bastard in the Hebrew, the word is 
Mumza. Which they say, if if you're a Israelite man with a woman from another nation, that your son is a bastard. But they also say, let me just look it up. Bastard child of incest. Which that makes sense. Because if you lay with your first cousin or your sister, the son will be a bastard. But the term bastard is also like a spiritual term. You know, if you come into this truth and you leave the truth, you become a bastard in a spiritual uh, sense. Esau will be considered a bastard because he hasn't come into the truth. Now, is Esau going to come into the truth? You're damn right. In the kingdom of heaven, he's going to learn about the law, statutes, and commandments. Next precept. Deuteronomy 21, verse 15. It says, if a man have two wives, one beloved, and and the other and another hated which proves that you can have more than one woman in the kingdom of heaven some of y'all will have a thousand women some of y'all will have seven thousand women and you'll be able to please all of them it says uh, 15 verse Deut Deuteronomy 21 verse 15 if a man have two wives one beloved and another hated, and they have have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated. And if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, that then it shall be when he maketh his son to inherit that which he, which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. So that's the right of the oldest child. The oldest son gets, gets the inheritance before the second born son. Now I want to go to from there to uh let's jump down to the 18 verse. Now if you have a son <coughs> this is Deuteronomy 21 verse 18. If you have a son that has uh reached the age of accountability which is 12 years old. If you have a, a daughter, the age of accountability is 12 years old. That's why some of them, not all of them, the daughters got married off at the age of 12, 13 years old. And the father gave the daughter away to a man and usually it was a deal behind it. They show you that in the movie, The Color Purple. And they made uh, this guy, uh, Danny Glover, look bad. You know, Jake was hating, the black woman was hating <laughs> Danny Glover in that movie until he did the, uh, uh, what is that, um, this cop series with uh, this guy. So they, they really hated that guy, but he was only acting. But that's how, that's how it was in the ancient world. Well, that, well, to us is the ancient world, but I'm talking about, we're talking about 100, 150 years ago.
And in the case of uh, Jacob, Jacob had two two sisters. Now the law came when you go into the law, the law says you cannot uh, lie with your sister, your your a woman and her sister. You cannot lie with a woman and her mother. That's the law. But when Jacob did it, that was before the law was established. So it says, Deuteronomy 21, verse 18, if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, this is a son that is of the age of accountability, meaning he's supposed to move out or stay with his father, learn the craft of his father. Now, what did Jacob do? Jacob came up under Laban for 14 years and got two two of his his daughters and got two of their um their handmaids because when when a woman gets with a man that's a possession of a man so what did uh, uh Rachel and Leah Aaliyah, Rachel and Leah uh bring to the table they brought their substance and they brought their two handmaids so guess what those were those were uh, Jacob's handmaids. That's why he, he, he dealt with them under the orders of both uh, 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 Leah and Rachel. So it says, if a man have, have a stubborn and rebellious son which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother and that when they have chastened him, meaning beat him, he still do the same thing. He'll get the beating, he'll take the beating, will not hearken unto them. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold. Uh-oh, uh-oh, there goes the word lay hold. <laughs> Let's see if that means be nice to him. Lay hold, meaning grab. Let's fact check that. The word for lay hold is thapash, which means to catch, handle, lay hold, take hold, seize, arrest, catch, grab them up. That's the same word in Deuteronomy. Uh, the 22nd chapter. It says, Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of the city and unto the gate of his place, and they shall say unto the elders of the city, This hour... Now, they, they're bringing the son to the elders or the judges of the city and bringing a case against him. And the case is what? He's lazy. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to um, work. And it's going to say that. So basically, they're setting this man up to be put to death. Now, Israel, the Israelites thought different back then. You wouldn't do that right now. That's why you have these demons. You know these 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 beasts out here now because you're in a one family, um, 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 single family home. Excuse me. Your father's might be locked up or wherever he is. So all he has is the mother, and the mother can't control that son. You know, you got some wild ass Jakes out, out here, man. And that's why a lot of these Edomite cops, man, they'll look at a Jake and they'll blow he'll blow a nigga away quick. Because what does Esau think? Esau thinks that this is like a basically a wild animal, plus he hates Jake. It says, uh, and they shall say unto the elder of the city, this our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton. He, eat, he eats everything in that house. Like, th like today, you got kids that are a certain age. They might be 16, 17. Some might be 27 years old. Living and that ha it happens among them Ephraimites, man. Them silly ass Ephraimites.
that here you 65 years old your your, your son might be uh uh 50 years old and you got you got him in the house and you cooking for him and all that and he's out there hanging out not working not doing anything he was supposed to be put to death that goes for, for Jake too it says he will not obey our voice he is a glutton and a drunkard and all the men of the city shall stone him with stone till he that he die so shalt thou put away ev uh, away evil away from among you and all Israel shall hear and fear let me read the 22nd verse let's see what that says and if a man have committed a sin worthy of death and he be to and and he be to be Put to death and thou hang him on the tree his body shall not remain all night upon the tree so you bury him that that's why when that when Yahweh Shai was hanging on the cross they took him down and buried him because you can't leave a body out there all night see Jake they'll hold a body in state you supposed to bury that man it says in the 23rd verse his body shall not remain all night upon a tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is a is a curse of the most high. So that's why the Lord, when he was on the cross, he said, He said, My my power, my power, why have thou forsaken me? Because he felt the presence of the Father, and that proves that you have the the heavenly father and then you have his son they're not one and the same Let me read that again for he that is hanged is accursed of the most high so Yahweh Shai actually felt the presence of the most high leave him that thy lamb be not defiled which Yahweh the most high giveth thee for an inherit inheritance Okay, let me go back to bear me for a minute. Okay. Going to another precept. Deuteronomy twenty five. And I'm going to start from the, the fifth verse. If a brethren, and this never happens in Israel, if a brethren dwell together and one of them uh, die and have no children, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger meaning another Israelite her husband's brother shall go in unto him, unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband a husband's brother unto her and it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother that there was a uh, a um, account with Judah and I believe the woman was Tamar if I'm not mistaken I'm not gonna read that story but he but she had uh, supplanted him to lay with 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 her because she didn't she didn't get to lay with any of his sons and one of his sons were put to death because the other one died that's a whole another story and um, he he said, where, where is this harlot so I can burn her? And then she showed herself that she had his signet and his staff. And he, and he said to, to the woman that thou art um, 
are more righteous than I because he had, she had to supplant him. Anyway, it says, which is, let me read that again, 26, uh, Deuteronomy 25, verse 26. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother, the one that died, which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. Let me read the seventh verse. And if the man like, if, and if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let the brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say, my husband's brother refuses to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband, my husband's brother. A verse, then the elders of the city shall call him and speak unto him. And if he stand to it and say, I, I like not to, to take her, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off, off his foot and spit in his face and shall answer and say, so shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. So that that would be a that would be considered that's that's strange. And it's so strange that that where where have you heard it? Yeah, have you heard Nate? You know Nate, the I U I C. Not not getting on him. I'm just using him as an example. Let's say there's a. Uh, a, a man that's that's part of IUIC and he's married to a woman and his brother lives with him or near him and and the, and the man the husband dies they supposed to call the council and say okay or she can go to the man well I'm going to lay with you to bring back seed in the name of in the name of your brother which technically it's not even your seed, even though it is your seed, because it's going to have your brother's name. So when that man grows up, he's not going to talk about his actual biological father, but he's going to respect the father that he was supposed to have that died. Now, if you if you hear a, some a story or a situation that took place like this in America. They would look. They would look at you cross-eyed, man. They'd look at you like you got three heads. Okay, let's see what Exodus twenty-one verse seven says. Exodus 21 it says and if a man sell his daughter to be a oh another thing <laughs> um you had men in Israel that straight up sold their daughters it says, and if a man sell, who's these laws written for? Are these laws written for Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites? No, they're written for Israel. It says, and if a man sell his daughter to be a maid servant, she shall not go out as the maid servants do, or the man servants do. In other words, if the the the, the father sells his daughter to a slave to another Hebrew. With a manservant, he's a slave under that man for seven years. Then he goes out with substance. But the maidservant has to stay with that master whether he gives that, that woman to another Israelite man, which could be a smart move because if they had children, 
he would want to stay with that that the master which is also a hebrew and and and, and say i love my master and i want to be a servant unto him forever then they would take that all and they put it through your ear through the doorpost Eight verse, if she please not her master who have betrothed her to him. So you can buy a, uh, a, a maid servant from another Israelite and you can have her be a servant or you can deal with her. And normally what would happen is you would deal with her. And that and that happened in uh, the movie, reference in the movie, uh, The Color Purple. The color purple was a deal between two men. One man had two daughters. He gave the one the one daughter up, which was played by uh, Whoopi Goldberg. And he he would he would ride around and fill up on the other one, and they made him look like a like a like a a bad person. Well, he wasn't a bad pers person because women didn't have. A say in this matter. It says, if she please, 8 verse, Exodus 21 verse 8, if she please not her master who hath betrothed her to himself, whether she liked it or not, then shall he let her be redeemed to sell her unto a strange nation. He shall know, she, he shall have no power seeing that, seeing he hath dealt deceitfully with her so you had a certain amount of respect unto your maidservant let me see if I covered everything damn I'm pretty sure I missed one Oh, also the backup to Deuteronomy 25, verse 5 to 10 is Matthew 22, verse 23. Let me go back to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 20. I believe that's 21. Bear me for a minute. Let me try it this way. Okay, that's not it. Bear me for a minute. I think I found it. Okay, this is uh, Leviticus. 24 verse 10 now this is this shows you the importance of the name of the most high when you blaspheme the name of the most high according to the law you would be, you are to be put to death Leviticus 24 verse 10 and the son of an Israelite is woman, which is an Israelite woman. Her father was a Danite. Who fought, and it's going to tell you that in the next verse, the 11th 11 verse. It says, whose father was an Egyptian. Meaning this Israelite woman 
fell in love with an actual Egyptian man and they had a son together, went out among the children of Israel and the, and this son of Israel liked this woman. Um, now Israel liked this just means um, Israel in the fe feminine uh, state. That's all it means. Uh, the, the son of an Israelite, this woman, and a man of Israel strove together in the camp because they were in the wilderness. And that proves that you had a mixed multitude because you had other, you had uh, Israelite women that were dealing with men of the other nations, which they were going off. It says 11 verse, Leviticus 24 verse 11, and the Israelite, woman's son, blasphemed the name of Yahweh and curse. So he obviously knew the name of Yahweh and he blasphemed his name. He said, basically he said, F your, your God and name the name. And he brought him unto, the, unto Moses and his mother's name was Shalomith, the daughter of uh, Debri, which is uh, the Barya of the tribe of Dan. So she was a Danite. And they put him in ward that the mind of Yahweh might be showed them. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that have cursed without the camp, and let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head. Then basically they whipped his head and let all the congregation stone him. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curses his power, the Most High Yahweh, shall bear his sin. And what's the what's what's the penalty for cursing the name of the Most High or playing with the name of the Most High? Is death. Like this guy Nate, he got his whole congregation calling on some faggot named Jesus. So don't be surprised if the Most High bring death to that congregation. 16 verse, and he had blasphemed the name of Yahweh, he shall surely be put to death. And all the congregation shall cert certainly stone him as well. The stranger, the other, other, other nation, even an Israelite that's a stranger, as he that is born in the land, meaning the Israelite, when he blasphemed the name of Yahweh, shall be put to death. So when you have your congregation calling on Jesus the Christ, that's a heinous crime. Do you know breaking the Sabbath is, is, is a punishment worthy of death? And so is blaspheming in the name of the Most High because did not Esau blaspheme in the name of the Most High? That's in the book of Revelation. Let me see if I can get that. I believe that's Revelation 17, if I'm not mistaken. Revelation 17, verse 3, it says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman, which is America, sit upon a scarlet colored beast, which represents uh, NATO and the EU, uh, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So I want to see real quick how many times blasphemy is in the book of Revelation. It's in Revelation 2, 9, Revelation. It says in Revelation 13, verse 5, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies 
and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against the Most High and blaspheme his name. Blaspheme his name. Now when you look up blaspheme, blaspheme or blaspheme his name, Strong's G, 988, blasphemia, blasphemia. Which means slander, detraction, speech injurious to another good name, impious and reproachful speech injurious to divine majesty. So when you call on the name Jesus, the Christ, that's not the name of the Most High. So what you're doing is blaspheming the name of the Most High. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.